Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, happy Valentine's Day for those that are joining us. And um, thank you for joining us, and welcome to the latest format webinar designed to offer tips and insights on ways in house resourcing teams can uh, improve your talent attraction and engagement strategies. So, on this particular session, as ever, we have um, format account director David Johnson, or DJ as he's known to his friends, to talk us through how people really search online and how you can get your messages and your jobs in front of them before your competition. So as ever, the webinar will last around 20 minutes. Uh, it's interactive, so any questions, please do just type away as we go along, uh, and we'll address them at the end, um, and it'll be a full Q&A session um, if you want to add them right at the end. So uh, over to you. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, welcome everybody, and um, glad you could join us. We've got a fair few people on the call uh, webinar today. Um, so what we wanted to look at um, today was really get a bit of a, an insight into how people really search, um, whether they're actively looking for jobs or looking for information on a new career, uh, or just browsing about you know, other opportunities. Um, and it's a question that comes up uh, a lot, especially with uh, when we're out and about at uh, conferences. Uh, the reason for it is, as recruiters, we get used to the fact that you know, we have structured searches, we search specifically for vacancies, we search specifically for candidates, um, but actually we sometimes forget how in the real world people actually look for a job because um, you know, we're always uh, in, in and around the industry. Uh, for example, somebody said to me that um, you know, the first point of call people would go to is, is a job board, but actually uh, we know that the first point of call for most job seekers if they're active is actually Google. So let's just dive in and, and just look at you know, the real world. So who am I? Um, well, I've been around far too long in recruitment now, 24 years. So put that into context, that was before Google. Um, and that was before we actually um, put uh, adverts onto the web. We used to use these things called newspapers and local, uh, local and national newspapers and magazines. Um, I've been 18 years in recruitment and marketing. Um, Primarily, take it. when I first started, I took a business from being completely offline in terms of their recruitment marketing to being completely online. So um, I've seen seen it also to speak, which is it's a bit scary because it's, it's actually not that long. So let's look at how we actually search. So think about your own habits. For example, yeah, we have two dogs, and one of the things we like to go down to Cornwall. So I would type in dog friendly cottages, and so. Yeah, I'd also want to go to the um, seafood restaurant, haven't managed yet. And lo and behold, underneath the adverts, which I tend to ignore, is a link for dog friendly cottages in Padstow, Cornish Horizons. So I'll click on that link. We know 80% of people click on that first link. And I scroll down. If you notice, that landing page is actually called Dog Friendly uh, Cottages in Cornwall. Um, I quite like the look of this rent cottage, so I'll click on it, have a look. And I can see, I can book, I can see when availability, there's a special offer. It's also a call to action if I want to pick up the phone or message them. Um, so, you know, I've got everything there. Um, I'm quite keen on that. Um, the other way of searching is imagine, you know, you've been out with some friends and they tell you that Wren Cottage is a great place. So you go back to Google and you type in Wren Cottage Padstow. And lo and behold, the advert or the link to that page lands at the top of the search. So again, I'm straight into Red Cottage, I can read all about it, I can look at availability, and I can actually you know, book. So two examples there where somebody is sort of like browsing uh, potential roles, but also uh, somebody knows specifically what they want. And that's something we do absolutely instinctively. So yeah, I was looking uh, before Christmas um, for a Sony um, TV. Um, I, you know, wanted to upgrade my TV to a 4K TV. So I went to Google and I typed in Sony 4K TVs, fairly in intuitive. And at the top, you've got the shopping results. We'll come back to those later. I've got some you know, stories about Sony. I've got some links to the Sony website. Well, I'm not gonna buy direct from Sony, be expensive. And then I've got Curry's and John Lewis. Well, I click on the John Lewis because John Lewis have a good brand in this area and also a three year um, yeah, guarantee. First one here, I like that. So I click on the link and I can find out about the Sony TV. I can read about it, I can look what other products you know, go together. So, for example, I want to put it on the wall. Uh, and I can also see on the right hand side there, customers went on to buy. So, yeah, here's an example of uh, you know, 
another product that may have actually be of interest. So if I want to, I can I click on there. So, you know, easy to find. Everything's there in front of me. Um, whether I want to actually you know, immediately purchase or whether I want to find out a little bit more. Um, so that's something you know, we do instinctively, as I said. Let's put that towards the uh, job search side of things. So how do I optimize my career site in the same way to really take advantage of people who are actively looking for a job? So remember, job search equals shopping. And in fact, the phrase shopping for jobs is quite common now. So you know, think about how you shop online and you get an idea of how uh, the active job seeker will search. So make sure you're Google friendly. That's the most key thing. So for example, I'm a senior structural engineer in Exeter. I'm looking for a role down in the, the Southwest. Um, so I start typing into Google um, my job title um, and also a location. So I'm looking for a job, so I just particularly put that in. And then I click return. So now what I get is some ads at the top, but I also get a long list of Indeed. Now I've been looking for roll on off and I'm fed up with bouncing around in Indeed. Um, so I'm actually looking for an employer. And I find the Atkins link here. So senior structural engineer vacancy Atkins. Takes me straight through to the vacancy. Remember Rennie Cottage, very similar. I can see the recruiter's profile. I can see similar jobs alongside that working in the same sector. And as I read down, I can read the actual uh, vacancy advert. I can decide whether I want to apply or whether I you know, email myself. Um, but then at the bottom, I've got Inside Atkins. So you know, a video there of somebody who works in um, this area, some of the projects in the building services area. So there's lots of information that I can use to actually make a decision on whether I want to keep browsing or actually apply for the job. And I click on the apply. It then allows me, it pr provides a short application form, uh, which then pushes the details into um, the Taleo um, ATS. Whilst we're on that subject, in terms of Atkins, you use um, Taleo uh, as their applicant tracking system. And like most applicant tracking systems, the standard job board, job search, is basically hiding the jobs from Google. Uh, forget the horrendous application process, but in terms of the big problem is all of those jobs sit on the Taleo platform, not on the Atkins career site. Um, but what we do is we pull all those vacancies out of the Atkins, uh, the Taleo platform and actually publish them on the Atkins career site. You notice careers.atkinsglobal.com. So we've got everything together. And that's really key when it's about optimizing your career site for uh, Google. Um, there's key things that we actually um, use. So, for example, we have a, a Google-friendly uh, web address URL. So you can see it's the, it's the actual career site. Google will immediately know it's a job, and it's the actual job title that's pulled in. We also put other information, like, for example, we make that very easy for Google to index um, in terms of the location. Uh, and we also make sure that the content at the top of the advert is instantly available to Google. It's called the meta description. And you can see that Google is very clever, that even though the guys at Atkins who wrote this advert have put what I would call the corporate blurb at the top, Google's actually pulling the key bit of information that we call the meta description, which appears in the actual search results. So that is effectively the call to action to make somebody click on this advert. So basically what you're trying to do is make sure that all your jobs are optimized for Google, because if Google can find your jobs um, you actually are then taking, uh, yeah, you're really making sure that anybody that actively is looking for a job, uh, whether they're typing in what we call a non branded search, sorry, job title, location, or job area, um, they're going to find your vacancies, and even easier if they actually put the company name in. So in order to you know, maximize talent, yeah, that's the first bit. Visibly accessible jobs. Make sure that people can find them. But then really what you're trying to do is make your career site the hub of everything you do. So the hub of your talent attraction, whether somebody is actively looking for a job uh, and using Google or using Indeed or using LinkedIn, or whether somebody's actually browsing and is more passive. So they're actually looking at content. Uh, they may be checking you out on LinkedIn. They may be checking you out on Facebook. They may be checking you out on Twitter or any number of other platforms. You know, Glassdoor is growing phenomenally in terms of the amount of traffic that it sends to career sites now. 
So you want to make sure that you know, all of your content is easily uh, visible. Um, and then you want to make it a seamless experience. So if somebody's coming through from Facebook, I mentioned, yeah, they're coming through, they're reading content on your career site, and they're, then they're going through and actually looking at vacancies. But the whole experience is seamless. So in the same way as if you find a, uh, I don't know, a, you know, a TV, as I mentioned, on you know, being promoted on Facebook, and you click through, you want to come through to see that uh, in a nice, friendly environment that feels uh, warm and comfortable. Uh, and then you want to actually purchase. You don't want to be sent off to a, a faceless, um, non-branded, uh, you know, pay for this because you're immediately going to get suspicious and wonder who on earth you're giving these details to. So we want to make it easy for people. Um, so let's look at this from a perspective of well-known brands. So Harrods, for example, we've, we've launched a new career site for them. Um, people want to work for Harrods and they want to find the jobs quickly. So what we actually have is a similar search to Google. So front and center, start your job search. You start typing in here. So for example, I start typing fashion. And if you notice that we've got predictive search, so it's not just about keywords and job search searches, but also vacancies and also their career stories. So their content they want to get people to see. Nobody else is doing this, and I think there are very few career sites apart from ours at Paul Mapper will have this. They then, if they want to click through to the job search results and scroll down, notice this looks very similar to the uh, results for the TVs on the John Lewis site. We make no excuse for that. Again, job search is shopping. I click on a retail sales associate that I'm interested in. I come through to the specific vacancy. I start scrolling down. I can find out a little bit more about it. I can read the actual job advert. On the left-hand side, we've got similar jobs. Then what we've got is people stories. Now, these are people that are working in this area, so I'm actually quite intrigued about outside, outdoor luxury. It's quite interesting. So I can read about Salvador, who works in this area. Interesting. And then I come down and find more related content, more similar content. And then what I can do is actually look at some related jobs. So actually, I know the brand Chloe really well. So I click on that to find out about the job. And again, I can then start scrolling down, reading about the vacancy. Is this something that I'm actually interested in? Um, again, I come down and see, again, related people stories. I want to find out more. And then actually, I can see the recently viewed jobs. So in the same way as retail sites put products that you actually look at and allow it to follow you around the site, we do the same thing. So I haven't had to, you know, to research for this retail associate job. It's been pushed there because you know, the website knows that I've looked at it and therefore it's going to make it easy for me to find that content again. So all of these help actually continually engage, but more importantly, allow somebody to move around the site looking at different content that's re related without actually having to, to try and find it, so to speak. It's actually been pushed there in front of them. So the other ways in terms of we know people like to search is in browsing. So wherever they are on the site, the browse jobs appears in the main navigation. It also appears on the home page, so we know that yeah, that's what people want to do. And they can scroll through, but if you notice at the top, you've also got the actual keyword search, which is again, following the round available throughout the site. So wherever they are, whatever method they want to use, whether it's keyword or browsing by different job areas, they can find vacancies really easily. So this is about total search, making it really simple, not making people actually hunt for content, pushing it out in front of them. So that looks at yeah, how somebody wants to actively search, making their life easy, and that's what it's all about. But the other part of it is let's look at less uh, active candidates. Or actually, these people are just potentially interested um, parties. They may be just people out there that are interested in working for you. So one of the things, you know, Harrods are really good about pushing out uh, content and telling their employees stories. So they have lots of profiles that we just looked at, as we just saw in terms of about the people that live and work at Harrods and what it's like to be an employee. So here's an example of Facebook. So, you know, if you're following Harrods careers, you know, you'll potentially see this uh, post, Meet Alice, Customer Loyalty Advisor. And that takes us straight through to the customer loyalty advisor on the Harrods career site. You can read about why she loves to work at Harrods, you know, what is, makes somebody successful, 
and really, you know, what's her best moment? And why Harrods at the end of the day? Keep scrolling down, you can see other similar content working in her area, so she's linked to the uh, catering side of things. Um, but then I find some other related jobs. So actually, I'm interested in this role here, working in Knightsbridge. I want to be local. I don't speak Mandarin. I can read through the vacancy. I can find out about it. Again, I can see similar jobs. And if it's interesting, I can apply. So again, we're using the power of the employee stories to bring people to the career site. And then we're tapping them on the shoulder, saying, you're interested in this? We've got a job in that area. The other part of using your employees to engage is actually around the actual um, people themselves. So here you've got Grace. So Grace is a recruiter uh, with Harrods. Now, I would imagine most of you have are using LinkedIn, whether you're using it with uh, their recruitment licenses or whether you're just using it as a, a normal um, premium account or anything like that. <coughs> um, so basically, rather than having people follow you on LinkedIn, or necessarily immediately go to your LinkedIn profile. Because to be honest, if somebody's looking at your profile on LinkedIn, they're also being tapped on the shoulder and they're saying, if you looked at this profile, you know, people people that looked at you also looked at these people. So you don't really own the journey, you own the content immediately, but it's really easy for somebody just to, to jump off and actually start looking at your competitors. So what we do is actually we call this social hub and basically it allows content to be built up around people. Now with recruiters, that's specifically jobs, but if they're keen on actually writing blogs and inside pieces, it could be also blogs, articles, videos, anything like that. Um, and you can also build content around the employees, so for example, hiring managers, people with big networks. You can use the power of their network to engage with people. Um, so you know, what that means in reality is you know, that somebody will come through and actually cl click on somebody's bio. And when they actually view the bio, you can find out about yeah, Grace, but you can immediately view their, la their latest live jobs. So what you're doing is allowing people to come through and connect with you on via the career site, but immediately see the jobs that you're actually recruiting for. So here we have an example, you know, visual merchandiser, you can find out about the role and apply. So lots of different ways of actually getting through to the same area and it allowing people to browse, find out more information or actively search. So this is about what real candidates are actually doing, how they're actually searching. You know, the classic one here in terms of the you know, grace is for example, if you're out at a, a conference or career fair, or you're actually just sending somebody an email or a note by uh, LinkedIn, whatever you're doing, you know, at the end of the day, it's very likely that person will go back to Google and Google you. And um, what you want to do is make sure that your profile appears above LinkedIn. And we see this happen an awful lot. The reason for it, we believe, is the fact that Google knows that you work at that business. So it will know that Grace works at Harrods. So if somebody's searching in Google, um, it actually looks at it and goes, well, the profile on the Harrods career site is potentially more relevant than the one on LinkedIn. So all this is really, really important when you consider the fact there's something big on the horizon. And it's been on the horizon for a few months now, um, but it's all to do with Google Jobs. Um, a lot of people have um, kind of missed the fact that Google Jobs is coming. Uh, I think it's mainly due to the amount, the amount of noise and emails and conferences that are talking about GDPR. Um, but Google Jobs is going to change things phenomenally for uh, direct employers. Um, it's effectively, if you haven't already, if you don't already know, it's a dedicated vertical jobs search engine. So what that means, basically, that if you anybody is searching on Google and using, for example, uh, finance jobs, finance careers, careers with a company name, it will appear in the same way as we had saw at the beginning with the shopping uh, widget. Um, it was released in the U.S. on 20th of June last year, um, and basically, it is taking on indeed head on, um, to the point that actually the Indeed organic jobs, so the ones that are paid for, do not appear in Google for jobs. So yeah, it's one of those things that is really going to shake up because at the moment everybody is seeing Indeed jobs in the Google listings, but Google for jobs will sit above uh, the organic listings. 
Um, it's working with early job board partners, which include Facebook, LinkedIn, Career Builder, Glassdoor, um, and it's really, really easy to filter for jobs. Um, you, know, you can search in a variety of different ways. The question I, I, got, I asked Google last year, and they, you know, like Google, terribly secretive, wouldn't particularly answer it, but Google for Jobs is already here. I was playing around last year, and I was switched my location to the US, so I could get the Google for Jobs box to appear, um, and I typed in Atkins Careers, um, and because Atkins are already optimized around uh, Google for Jobs, their vacancy appeared, um, but they were actually for the UK. So Google started indexing uh, UK jobs um, as early as about September, late September last year. Um, we were first told or hinted that it would launch at the end of November, um, but it hasn't yet. And that's because they're doing quite a bit of changes behind the scenes and refining things. Um, this is what it actually looks like. So when you actually click into it, um, you have all your vacancies matching your search on the left, and you can, every time you click on one, it appears on the right-hand pane. Now, for any of you who have looked at Indeed vacancies in the last couple of weeks, this will look quite um, familiar, unless it's because Indeed are immediately reacting to Google and basically trying to actually create the same experience. So previously, if you clicked on a link in uh, Indeed, it would go through to, for example, your career site or a job on a job board or a job on a uh, your recruiting agency site. But now they're actually displaying the vacancy when you click on it. What that will mean is actually that the actual traffic from Indeed will drop, but conversions potentially will uh, increase. And that's certainly what we're seeing over the last couple of weeks. Um, but we'll, it remains to be seen exactly how heavily impacted they are when Google Jobs launches. You can set up email alerts really quickly. You just have a slider, you turn it on and off. And you know, to give you an example, the Atkins jobs are pulled every 30 minutes from uh, a different tracking system from Taleo and published on the website. Every 30 minutes, I was getting a job alert. So it's one of those that I turned off very quickly, but it was a great example of how quickly uh, Google was actually indexing the vacancies. And what it's been doing for the last um, you know, few months is really refining things. It's got a much better location filter now, to the point that you know, Google, if a, if a job has a specific location, so for example, a longitude and latitude or the postcode, um, you can basically set your different distance and do radial searching. The salary filter is incredibly powerful as well. And I know that is something that is uh, you know, contentious with direct employers. Um, but what Google it wants, it wants people to find the most relevant jobs, so it wants people to have the most relevant salaries. Um, and if it can't find a salary, it will basically look at what those job titles, what typical salaries will be uh, paid to that person. Uh, and it also has a choice of application. So Google for Jobs is trying to deduplicate because it knows that jobs are advertised on corporate career sites, it's advertised on recruitment agency sites, it's advertised on multiple job boards. So what it's actually doing will give you an option to actually apply based on your choice. So what does that actually look like? So here's an example of you know, this appearing um, for a search for social work in New York. And then when I actually click onto the actual vacancy, you can see you've got three different application processes, ZipRecruiter, Glassdoor, and LinkedIn. If this job was on a direct employer's career site and that was op job was optimized for Google, you'd have alongside it, you'd have the career site. So what we're seeing with our clients that have, uh, where we've optimized the jobs for Google for jobs, we're actually seeing that their website is appearing on the first on the left and then the others appearing on the right. And what we're seeing is that yeah, potential candidates are actually clicking on the company's uh, application button. So again, really important that you optimize, your jobs are optimized for Google for jobs, not just Google. And then example, you scroll down, example of this job didn't have a uh, salary against it. So it's basically pulled this information from two platforms in the US, Payscale and Pacer. Um, and it's saying a social worker based on local employers, which should be paid between 45 and 69,000. But based another Pacer is saying actually between 61.4 and 61.8. Now obviously that is something that is uh, potentially gonna be troublesome um, you know, if you're not paying uh, what Google thinks is the going rate. So um, Google is really trying to get people to be more transparent. 
but I think that's going to be something that's going to take time for employers to catch up. So in summary, there's three things to take away from today. The first is make sure your jobs are Google friendly and not hidden in your OTS. Um, because what this means is if somebody is actively looking for a job that you're advertising, there's a very good chance they're going to find that vacancy. So you really don't need to worry. You really don't need to spend a lot of time, resources, and money on attracting you know, active job seekers because they're going to find you. The second is make sure the content is relevant so that if somebody's landing on a vacancy, there's content around it that helps that person make a decision on whether that you as a business are right for them and whether that job is right for them. Whether that's insight into the projects you're running, whether it's your employees, whether it's you as a, a business in, term, in terms of your corporate social responsibility. Yeah, again, make sure that content, content is relevant to what they're looking for. And finally, extending on that, use the power of your network and your recruiters and employees to basically build that content. Yeah, your employees have the most powerful stories. Yeah, you should be telling those and using them to attract candidates. So leaving you on those three points, I hope that's been useful and given you some ideas. Um, so let's throw it open to the floor. I think there's some questions that have been coming in. Um, do you want to just, let's just have a look? Yeah, here. so there'll be some questions coming through uh, as we've been going, which is good. Uh, obviously, if anything uh, comes up, please need to type away and, uh, and we'll address them now. Um, the first one that was kind of coming in halfway through uh, was, uh, and I won't mention who this was from, but we aren't a major brand like Harrods. How can we possibly compete? That's so, a, yeah, that's a really good question. And uh, it's a question that has been around, well, ever since, I, ever since I've been in recruitment. Um, so, Yes, that's yeah, it's a very good point. You know, Harrods are in the position where they actually probably get too many uh, applications of people that just want to work to Harrods rather than the right type of people. Um, and actually, it doesn't necessarily mean you being a big brand nationally or internationally. You know, there are companies that we work with that are unknown outside of the locality, so they may have a very good uh, awareness in the, in the local area. Um, and this is where it comes down to making sure your jobs are optimized for Google. So that if anybody is searching for, for example, finance assistant in a specific location, I don't know, Basildon, Brentwood, Watford, et cetera, then if your jobs are optimized based on job title and location, that's highly likely to appear at the top of the search engines. And then it's yeah, optimizing content. Like from the very beginning, we saw about dog-friendly cottages. Again, creating landing pages around types of audience that you want to attract. Um, and then the final bit is in terms of you're publishing content that is interesting and relevant. For example, you get CV advice, interview advice, top tips from your recruiters about you know, finding uh, a new role. All of that is going to be very relevant to people that are searching your local area. Um, and none of that is going to be branded. Uh, and then the final side of things is use social media use promoted content, paid for content on Facebook, for example, you can target people. Um, you see the adverts on your own accounts, you can use exact that, that same approach in recruitment very effectively, and it costs, I don't know, 20, 30 pounds a time, it's not expensive. So I hope that's useful. Absolutely. Knowing how candidates operate online, you realize just how you know, unimportant the brand can be. Exactly. In terms of engaging if you're set up to make the most yeah. of it. We focused a lot on Google uh, on this presentation, but let's be honest, that is where at least 85% of people are going to start. So you know, let's uh, let's focus on that. Um, and on that subject, uh, someone's typed up. Our main source of traffic is indeed. How will this be impacted going forward? Ha! Oh, the billion-dollar question, and one that indeed would like you to uh, think about that isn't going to be a problem whatsoever. Um, okay. In reality, what's going to happen? Well, the Google for Jobs is going to appear at the top of the organic search results, underneath the active pay for adverts. So what that means is going to push all those indeed organic listings that we saw when we did the search for construction engineer down the page. So that is going to impact the amount of click-throughs. What we do think though is that because Google for Jobs is such a good interface, we actually think that um, job seekers will click into here and actually yeah, those people that have got their jobs optimized around and Google Jobs can find them. I think yeah, we're going to find them, they will do better. Um, it's companies that don't have their jobs optimized Google that are potentially going to suffer. 
uh, and it's one of the things that you know, people do ask me all the time, but the, the, the best solution is to make sure that your jobs are, are Google for Jobs friendly. And the, the re, ha, how you can do that, Google for Jobs has a stand, what we call a standard schema, and that's structured um, data behind the actual job details that you can view that effectively allows Google to understand what is the job description, what is the title, what is the location, etc. Um, so it's not something that's particularly hidden or secret. Any company can actually, if a technical company, should be able to actually use that schema and make sure your jobs are Google for jobs friendly. Thank you very much. Um, and we knew we had a couple of Tello users on this on this call, so we, we did reference them specifically. Uh, hence, a questions come up. So we we already have the social pages feature of Tello. I was told that this was Google friendly. Question mark. So okay, so Tello um, basically has uh, a new platform or a new uh, middleware that was added in uh, last year, uh, which is based on a platform which is Select Minds. Now this is a yes, it, it's a good, more Google friendly. Uh, platform, certainly more Google friendly than the standard Tileo platform. However, the, the, the actual platform is on selectminds.com. So for example, uh, the companies I know use it, Vodafone um, are on it, vodafone.selectminds.com is, is the URL. So that means, again, the vacancies don't sit on the actual company uh, career site, they actually sit on selectminds.com. So whilst they are easier to find in Google, um, they won't be indexed against any of the, the actual company's uh, you know, content, and they won't actually be indexed against the company's domain. So um, whilst it's, it's a step forward, uh, it's not actually a big step forward. It's, it's just a slight improvement. Going back to your, your Amazon analogy or John Lewis, imagine that having details of a TV on a separate page from the pictures in the profile of the TV, we can actually buy it. Just, yeah. It just, it just wouldn't happen. That's a very good point. It's almost a case of... Amazon having their uh, sell, trying to sell using their stock management system. Excellent. Um, so, if there's any more questions, we've got one more that's, that's popped up. But uh, if you have any more, do type them up. Um, and last one that we've got so far. Um, we want to be using our people, but how? Oh, we did a. Um, we can have another webinar dedicated yes. to this subject. We actually we, we actually had a, a breakfast meeting last September October time where we had. Um, Ellie from Atkins and a few other people um, yeah, involved. And this is, a, this is a classic question. Do not think that you have to go live with a new career site with all the content. Um, building content takes time. Little and often is better than uh, a lot and then some, suddenly forget about it. The easiest way to get um, profiles, um, and you know, there's, there's, there's a certain Nick Thompson at Vodafone who will um, you know, vouch for this, is simply to ask, have a profile um, questionnaire or ask people, why do you work for us? Um, we have about three or four uh, key questions. We have a profile sheet, which is about five questions that our clients send around to their employees. Uh, they send around to new starters and they ask them to complete it with a, a photograph and then it's uploaded to the website. And it really is simple. It's a profile questionnaire that has, what do you do? What, you know, what do you like best about working for us? Why do you work for us? What would you say to somebody who's thinking about a career with us? And then you can put in things like, you know, what's your funniest moment, depending on the type of audience. View Cinemas, for example, had did some a while back about their customer customer systems. It was a case of, yeah, what's the funniest thing that's happened in your um, yeah, working career? Some of them we uh, actually couldn't put on the website because, and I was quite surprised that actually that happened in the cinema. I'll leave your imagination to go wild. And Google likes content, so if you've got content on the site, you're going to get a favour of a website that doesn't have content. So that's that's the way to do it. So, excellent. Thank you very much, DJ. Um, last few seconds, if anybody's going to send any other questions. Otherwise, thank you for joining us. Um, we are recording this webinar, so I shall send this out to you all uh, as a link to watch back at later today, perhaps share with your teams or amongst your networks. Um, but if you do have any other questions, DJ's and myself details are available and are on the first slide of this presentation. Uh, and we'll be in touch with details at our next webinar. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye-bye.